And guys, well today is gonna to be fairly short and sweet, but hopefully very useful to many of you out there. Today we're gonna to be checking out the Oracle NVMe M.2 enclosure. Now, SSD prices have continued to drop in the last 18 months. Our SATA based SSDs in particular have for a long time been a cost effective option to you know, tap into that super fast storage, uh, which is a lot more robust than a standard hard drive. But going beyond SATA to PCI Express driven M.2 SSD, equally these are dropping to much more affordable levels. So that in turn makes such a drive a great option if you're on the move, you want that super fast storage and you still want top class reliability, particularly if the storage that you are handling is uh, supremely important. Obviously an M.2 SSD is designed to be installed within a computer system, internally on a motherboard. However, if you need to be able to access such a drive while on the go, this Oracle SSD enclosure will allow you to get quick access by using the USB 3.1 Gen 2 interface. Now I should mention that we've got the Oracle SSD enclosure in the two versions, the aluminium and also the newly released transparent version, which allows you to see inside the drive. Both of these are gonna be available to buy from Amazon and various other stores, 40 US dollars, 40 British pounds, and 70 Aussie dollars. So that isn't pricey at all. I've actually been using a two and a half inch SATA SSD enclosure for a few years now, primarily there for the laptop reviews to keep all of the games on a SATA SSD. However, with that, there is a limitation of around 500 meg. The beauty with this Oracle is that you can effectively get double the transfer rate, which is gonna be very handy for people who are on the move, perhaps photographers, videographers that are you know, on location and need to quickly back up to secure storage. So today the plan is to unbox these two here, I'll show you what you get inside, and then we're gonna be testing out and seeing if it really does hold to that 10 gig 3.1 Gen 2 speed. We're also gonna be adding in for comparison uh, the SSD installed on the board simply for interest sake. Now before the unboxing, today's video is brought to you by Stormforce, who are a UK based company specializing in the building of high performance gaming rigs for those who want a pre-built system. We've reviewed many of their configurations over the last few years and they come highly recommended by us. Not only do they install a selection of great hardware from reputable brands, but they also offer a generous three year collect, repair and return. You can check them out at the link in the description. So this is the packaging that both our enclosures arrive in. It looks neat, looks tidy. There is a picture of the enclosure on the front and over on the back we have the tech spec. Now inside each of the boxes, the bundled accessories are identical. The main difference between these two being the enclosures themselves. One is thinner and makes use of aluminium casing, while the other is larger and has the PCB encased within this transparent case. It also has a heatsink element since plastic is definitely not gonna dissipate any heat. So inside each of the boxes we get two cables, one is type C to type C, and the other is type A to type C. Great that they supply both as it means that you're covered for either port. We also have a screwdriver, screws, and a brass standoff. So to get up and running, you'll need to open up the enclosure, remove the PCB, and by the way, this has the Jmicron JM583 bridge controller, which has the support there for UASP and trim. Next, we need to get our M.2 SSD, connect it up with the slots on the PCB while also attaching that brass standoff. You can see that it has this indentation and that just needs to slide into the end of the M.2. And then you're gonna to wanna to line it up with the screw hole according to the size of the drive and then attach a screw from the underside. And that securely fixes the drive to the PCB. And then we just need to drop both items back into the enclosure. You can see that we have these thermal pads on either side. In the transparent model, the thermal pads are supplied in this little bag for you to attach yourself. And you can move those pads around if you need to. Just line the USB-C port to the cutout and then pop that cover back on the enclosure and we're ready to go. Just remember to get the full benefit, the full potential of this M.2 drive. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are connecting up to a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port rather than just Gen 1. Okay, well next we're gonna be putting this SSD enclosure to the test by showing you the results that we got while running some popular SSD benchmarks. 
We'll also add in a 69 gig file transfer test, which includes a large selection of 4K video files. So this should represent real world usage. Files are transferred from the folder on the C drive, which is SATA SSD, over to the M.2 SSD itself. We should also mention that in these tests for comparison, we're also gonna include the M.2 installed on the motherboard itself, utilizing the full bandwidth from PCI Express. For a full list of the components used in these tests, check out the description. So that is what you guys can expect from using this Oracle M.2 SSD enclosure. As you can see, installing an M.2 SSD internally on the board, it's gonna give you those bigger transfer rates, but you know, for folks that want something external like this on the move, then this enclosure maximizes on that 10 gig throughput that the USB 3.1 Gen 2 interface brings. Now, obviously that file transfer test was SATA to USB 3.1 Gen 2, so SATA was the limitation there. However, as you can see, if we perform a test using two M.2 SSDs, one installed on the board and then one in the enclosure, that transfer rate will more than double. We can get up to 1000 meg a second. Against a SATA-based SSD in an enclosure, you're gonna pretty much get double the transfer rates with this Oracle, and that is gonna be very useful if you're out and about and you need to transfer data, a large amounts of data to a secure drive and probably a better option if, uh, if you have an against a USB drive, which could possibly malfunction. I've had plenty of those. If that was to happen with this enclosure, you could always just take out the SSD and back it up on your PC or even get another enclosure. We should also mention that the Jmicron JM583 bridge controller has full support for UASP and trim, which is always a good thing to have. So all in all, this enclosure offers you that great build quality. It is thin, it's lightweight, provides you with maximum bandwidth there for NVMe via the USB 3.1 Gen 2, and it also comes at a reasonable price. Is this the type of enclosure that you guys would use? Let me know in the top right corner. Hope you enjoyed today's video guys it would be appreciated if you could like the video and also just you know share it with anyone that might find it useful if you haven't already subscribed to the channel would love for you to join up and when you do make sure that you click that bell notification just to make sure that i switched on you get the latest videos when they release enjoy the rest of your day guys take care and i'll see you guys next time